An accidental discovery when removing rock for bitumen mining in Fork McMurray, Alberta during 2011 led to the discovery of one of the most important dinosaur remains of the last decade. After it was discovered by Sean Funk, an accident that occurred in the excavation led to the specimen being broken down into several pieces, but fortunately, these were recovered. After six years of careful preparation, the specimen was revealed to be an Ankylosaurian. This was surprising, due to the area it was found in, once the Western Interior Seaway, being completely covered in ocean, during the early Cretaceous, that the rocks were dated to. So, how did this specimen end up in the middle of the ocean? What can this animal tell us about nodosaurs, their coloration, and their floral ecology? But before we get into that, this video is sponsored by me. Please like and subscribe to support the channel, or you may find yourself with a missing kidney by the start of July. First, in advance of covering the questions put upon you, I must present to you some of the basic points of interest of this incredible specimen. The specimen was named Borealopelta Mark Mitchelli in honour of the fantastic scientist Mark Mitchell, who prepared the specimen on his own, sacrificing six years of his life. Its name means Northern Shield, in reference to the fact it was found on the northern part of North America. The animal was a nodosaurid, making it a medium-sized dinosaur. Being around 5.5 meters in length, its weight was around 1,300 kilograms. The fossil presents unique insight into the animal's digestive system, diet habits, and dinosaur coloration. Due to its fossilization, the specimen has not been crushed or morphed by its surroundings. This has been a problem with the discovery of mummies such as Combarosaurus or Montosaurus. Although the skin on the specimen is flattened and compressed, it is not shriveled like the before-mentioned Edmontosaurus specimen. One of the first questions you will probably ask yourself when you hear about Borealopelta is how it ended up in the ocean. The best idea scientists have proposed is that Borealopelta was washed out to sea after a flood, leading to its eventual death by drowning in the harsh, primordial ocean. Due to its large armour, its body would have sank in no time. Its amazing preservation is probably due to the animal being quickly covered by sediment, meaning that there were little to no opportunities for scavengers to eat its corpse. Since it was probably flipped onto its back, this explains how the back half of its body is far better preserved than the lower half, which shows a lot of deterioration. This is caused due to Ankylosaurian's anatomy being very top-heavy. Similarly, this mummified form has been observed in the Edmontosaurus specimen AMNH5060, which we mentioned earlier. We may go more into depth with it in a future video, but for now all you need to know is that it was scavenged upon, then dried and buried in river sediments to be discovered millions of years later. This process has even been seen in other Ankylosaurians, such as Edmontonia and the previously mentioned Cunborosaurus. As a result of the exceptional conditions this animal was preserved in, it has given paleontologists a unique insight into these animals' dietary habits and items. This rare opportunity did have some risks to the specimen, since rock splicing was used in order to understand the plant matter located inside Borealopelta. This involves what the name suggests, and is rather controversial due to the fact it can do unreplaceable damage to the specimen. For future reference, the term cololite may resemble the popular word coprolite in reference to fossilized poo, but cololite actually refers to stomach contents that has been fossilized within, in this case, Borealopelta. Around 85% of the food matter Borealopelta had was that of leaves, mainly coming from the modern fern subclass Leptosporongiate. This supports the idea that nodosaurs were selective feeders, similarly to modern medium-sized mammals that have to compete with super herbivores. Though the animal also has a 3% diet of conifer foliage, Pebbles the dinosaur swallowed, known as gastroliths, would have helped them digest their final meal. This behaviour is also seen in modern birds through gizzard stones. Boreala pelta creates a continuity within ankylosaurs of where they digest their food items, as comparing the location of the food mass of the distant relative Cunbarosaurus 
reveals similar locations for their digestion. This is interesting, since Cumbarasaurus is noted for having far less gizzard stones than Borealopelta. The growing ferns found in the animal suggest it died during the summer because they possess sporongia, the organ that releases spores from under their leaves. Charcoal makes up around 6% of Borealopelta's stomach contents. This suggests the animal was grazing after a large fire that burned down the conifer forest. Since today, ferns are known to grow quickly in succession of wildfires, it is thought that perhaps the Borealopelta may have been attracted to wildfires in order to eat the fern that makes up most of their diet. This behaviour is rather fascinating, and is something that we could only find in specimens like these. Perhaps many sorts of ankylosaurs would have used this niche in order to survive and compete against super herbivores, although we may never know. Having this specimen is a godsend for paleoartists and paleontologists looking for a reference when it comes to reconstructing these armoured units. A total of 172 osteoderms have been found on this tank-like animal, with the most ranged in size occurring on the cervical to thoracic region shown on the screen. These all grew at different rates, meaning many of the animals would have looked very varied from one another. This may have helped them differentiate other members of their species from one another. Keratinous coverings would have been found over the bone that remains, with there being much argument to how extensive in size these animals' sheaths were. This supports the idea that there was little to no consistency to the growth rate of their spikes along their body. Once they grew, they would have looked like the horns of a bull, being very intimidating to any predator and acting as efficient armour in order to defend themselves. This gives the impression that there was some irony in the way it died out of sea, since the armour which protected it on land weighed it down in the ocean, leading to its inevitable death. Perhaps these keratinous spines were used by Borealopelta Pelta to impress mates or to scare off the deadly Acrocanthosaurus, of which it may have shared a habitat with. In the last 20 years, paleontology has truly changed from taxonomy to the way we excavate our fossils, and recently we have gained a new way to bring these ancient animals to life, with melanosomes being found and used in order to colour these enigmatic creatures. The first ever dinosaur to have itself coloured was Ancyornis in 2010. Using melanosomes found within its fossilised feathers, scientists discovered this animal's colours. It was discovered to have black, white and grey feathers along its body, with a majestic red crest. This was a scientific breakthrough, and soon followed the coloration of Archaeopteryx, Cynosauropteryx, and even the mighty Pherozenosaurid, Biapiosaurus. Fortunately, Borealopelta also had melanosomes along its body, giving scientists another rare opportunity to reconstruct a dinosaur closer to life than ever before. The melanin traces suggest this animal had a brownie reddish colour, which has been suggested to help this animal camouflage in its environment. This adaptation indicates the predation pressure this animal had was large, with its countershading camouflage, perhaps suggesting there was an evolutionary arms race between the predators and the prey of their habitat. So, overall, this fossil allows scientists to get an intimate insight into this animal's place in its world. Through discovering its countershading, we know predation pressure was high. There is a strong possibility it was being attracted to burnt down forest fires, munching the ferns and cycads that had just popped up. And finally, we know a few hours after it died, it was washed away to sea where it was buried. Borealopelta Pelta was a truly fascinating animal, bringing dinosaurs to life in a rare and unique way, giving a distinct insight into ankylosaurs and their way of being. This mummy holds the essential features of what makes the field of paleontology so interesting, and can't help but capture the childhood curiosity many of us had for these armoured creatures. Thank you very much for watching this semi-short, semi-long video, depending on what standards you have for YouTube content. I hope it has been enjoyable and a bearable watch, 
I do plan on improving my content further, hoping to get a microphone soon. Hope you have all enjoyed this video, and goodbye for now.